Hey guys, today we got a 2001 Honda Foreman Rubicon 500. Um, it wasn't running. Uh, we took the air filter out and sprayed some carbon choke in it and it fired up. So and it was leaking a little bit of gas. So we're going to clean the carburetor on this today. Um, I'm just going to kind of do a view, kind of show you guys where all the vent lines and stuff are. How they're routed before we go tear it apart. Plus then I don't screw it up when I put it back together. So, um, probably a note right off the beginning is we're probably not going to touch these two screws or these two screws down that one or this one down here because this is the throttle position sensor. And if you look here, it's slotted so that you can adjust the throttle position sensor so like you can twist it. And we don't want <clears throat> we don't want to change it so because... I, I don't know how to change or how to make it right. So it's right right now. We're not going to touch it. But we're going to pull the top of the carburetor off, pull the diaphragm and slide out. Make sure all that's clean. See if there's any jets in there. Then we're going to tear the bottom apart. Clean everything in there. And then put it back together. So um, we're probably going to start with pulling all the vacuum lines or the overflow lines off. And setting them so we know how to put them back on. And then we're probably going to tear apart the top of the carburetor first so that when this is all tore apart, we can rest it upside down this way and it'll be easier to tear this apart. Because if we tear this apart first, there's the towers and stuff in the middle here and it's hard to position the carburetor down like this and push down on it because you're only pushing on a little spot. So we're going to take the top of this off once we get the vents off or the overflows. So let's get at it. It's kind of hard to screw these top vents up because they're two different size hoses with two different size bungs. So all right. So both of these overflow holders are on the motor side of the carburetor so we're just going to remember that okay. thing you always want to do before you start cleaning a carburetor is make sure the outside of it is clean you want to start with as clean of a, an exterior of a carburetor as you can when you start because you don't want to start tearing it apart and cleaning stuff and have dirt from the outside of the carburetor falling in it because we want this clean, obviously. There's gonna be a spring underneath this cap. So when you take this last screw off, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you hold the cap down with your fingers so that the spring doesn't make the cap go flinging. We're gonna set that there. All right, this cap, this cap does only go on one way. You see, there's an, a random, there's a boss here, and there's not a boss anywhere else. So when we go to put it back together, we're gonna have to make sure that that boss lines up with this here. So that is important. You want to be careful, sometimes this will stick to the carburetor body as you're pulling it off, so you want to be gentle. I usually stick two fingers in the slide and slowly start to pull up and out. And it will, you can work it off like that. Make sure you don't bend the needle. I'm going to set that down there. Alright, this has got a decent amount of crud in the bottom of this, but I don't see any jets. Sometimes certain CV carbs will have little air jets in here to control how much vacuum is in here. But all right, so that's all there is for the top. So we're going to just take the bowl off. We'll worry about this later. But we're going to pull the bowl off and worry about the main and the pilot jet first. But we can set it down nice and square. 
Now we have the top off. Please, for the love of God, for any mechanic after you, make sure you take your time taking the bowls off and not stripping the screws out. Because the next guy that works on it is not going to be very happy. Sometimes you can get at it with vice grips and get a screw out and replace it. Sometimes it's not that easy. That nasty spot there is not look. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So just because this carburetor bowl doesn't look like you used it to scoop mud with doesn't mean it's not dirty. Any little tiny piece of dirt in here is gonna plug a jet up and make it not run. All right. So, We look. Okay. So there's this overflow tube in the bowl, which is on, and when we flip it over, it's on this side of the bowl. And this little plastic cover here on the main jet has slots on that side of the carburetor. So we got to make sure that when we put this back on later, we don't put it on backwards or anything. They try to uh, make it so it's hard to screw up, but you'd be impressed with how some people like to force things. So. This is the emulsifier tube in the main jet. So we're gonna make sure there's nothing blocking the passageway in that when we put when we clean it. And then the emulsifier tube has a bunch of holes in the side here. Through these holes and up in the passageway, the carburetor, this is where the air and the fuel mix. So you gotta make sure that's clean or else you won't get proper mixture in the carburetor. So Pilot jets right next to that. There's a pilot jet. Alright. 
Now you gotta be careful with the pin here in this float. One time I had a street bike that I got dirt cheap and I went to try to push the pin out of one of these and it was stuck and I started pushing and I ended up breaking the whole tower off of this. So you wanna be careful to get the pin off. If it doesn't just slide off, you wanna do quick little blows with a hammer or sometimes a, uh, an auto punch or something. You wanna to try to do it nicely so you don't break the carb body. Cause if you do that, then you're, you have to buy a whole new carburetor. All right. The float felt like it was stuck on this one and it's dirty on all these ridges right here. So we're gonna make sure we clean that up. Gonna work this rubber plug out of here gently that was sitting here so we did pull this out and there's a screw down in here too so we're gonna pull that screw out Set him there. All right, now we only got one more thing in here. All right, so the way I was taught, you got two sides of a carburetor. You got one side that goes to the motor and one side that goes to the air box. Now on every carburetor, you've got one screw that has a spring underneath it and that you can adjust it. And depending on where the screw's at depends on what it is. So this screw here, has the spring underneath it, and it's on the, the motor side of the carburetor. So that means it's a fuel screw, because fuel comes out this side. If that screw is on this half of the carburetor, it's an air screw, because there's no fuel on this end of the carburetor. Just cold air comes in this way, and air and fuel comes out here. So an air screw is on this side of the carb, and a fuel screw is on this side of the carb. So this has a fuel screw on it. Before you pull it out, you want to screw it in and count how many turns in it goes, and write it down on your sheet of on whatever, something, so you can remember when you put it back together, because you want to set that the same. So this, this fuel screw is one half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, I don't know, about two and five eighths out. Two and five eighths turns out. So just over two and a half turns. All right, so we're gonna pull this out. All right, this never happens. You never pull this screw out and the O-ring and the washer and spring all come out together. So on this, you've got your fuel screw, you've got a washer, you've got your O-ring, or your spring, washer, and then O-ring. The way I remember it is when you put it all together, the O-ring holds everything in it. So it goes spring, washer, O-ring. So all, right, all that came out together. If they didn't come out, if you pulled the screw out and everything was in there, you have to go in there with a pick and try to get the washer out and the O-ring out. If not, if you lose those, it'll suck air there and it'll run lean, it won't run right, it'll maybe idle too high, it won't run worth the crap. So, so there's the fuel screw. You don't want to touch this. That's your idle screw. This adjusts 
how much this butterfly stays open on this, the carburetor. So you don't want to screw that out, we'll just leave that alone. And we're going to leave this sensor in it. We're going to try not to wash that very much. We're just going to try to keep this clean and keep it out of the chemicals. So try not to submerge the throttle posi position sensor or this other sensor underneath. Now what we're going to do is take a can of carburetor cleaner. Usually over top of a garbage can is all I do is hold over top of the garbage can, can and start spraying everything out. Make sure you shove the carburetor cleaner nozzle down every passageway you can find. The more carburetors you do, the more you'll learn what passages should also blow into other passages. So, so there she is. She is Nakey. All right, so you don't want to be bashful when you're spraying everything off. Make sure you cram the straw right down in everything. Blow it out. The more curious you get about where stuff's coming out of and passageways and stuff, the more you get you get to learn in what passageways should go where. So once you get everything blowed out, kind of spray the whole thing off. And then we're going to go blow out all those same passageways with air. And then that's one of the best ways to make sure everything's clean and open. So, all right. All right, and I should have done this before, but what you want to do is the seat in here, where the needle goes in and out of, you want to make sure that that's clean and smooth so that this needle will slide in and out of it nicely and you also want to make sure the bottom of the seat is clean so that the rubber tip makes good contact with the bottom of it and will seal it off. If not, your carb will overflow. So I should have done this before I sprayed everything out, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it out now and then I'm going to go back to the room and blow it all out again. So what I like to use is some fine steel wool and then you just get it started in there and you just start spinning it. So, this is a fresh piece, so it's going to take a little bit to get started in there. Kind of push in and twist it and work it down in there. What you're going to do is polish the inside of this brass seat. Get a lot of the corrosion off of it. Just give it a nice, clean, smooth surface for that to slide up and down on. It's starting to get shiny, so we're going to work at it a little bit more. Get it shined up, get it cleaned back out, and then we're going to start cleaning all the components off and put it back together. So, Alright, so now we've got all these brass pieces in the carburetor. Um, not only do I like to get the passageways clean, but I like to kind of clean up the outside as well too, just to help try to get any other corrosion off of them. Um, what I like to use is I've got, I went with a cordless because I really like this. You don't have to drag an air hose all the way around, but I'll put a link to in the description of uh, where to get one of these. As long as, as well as uh, one of these really fine wire wheels. I think it's 6 thou 0.006 crimped wire. 
So it's not very abrasive, but it's kind of a good polishing size wheel. This one's really beat. They're supposed to be longer and kind of flared out at the end, but this one does the job. So kind of clean up the outside first. You gotta make sure you don't get too crazy with it because especially with the smaller ones like the main jet, it's pretty easy to fling it across the shop and these things are hard to find. Not that I would know from experience or anything, but I, I heard it from a guy once, so, but. It just kind of cleans it up a little bit. There's less chance anything, any piece of crud or anything, dried up gas falling off of this and going into something else. I'm just gonna go through and polish all these first and then we'll go back through, um, take a piece of wire and go through all the orifices and then spray them out with carbon choke, blow them out with a little air and start putting the card back together. So. All right, now I got all the jets cleaned. Uh, the needle is cleaned. I gotta clean this little rubber piece. And what I'm gonna do for the little rubber piece, the rubber tip on the needle and the tip of this fuel screw, is I'm gonna take a clean rag and spray some carbon choke on it. And then I'm gonna take it, and I'm just gonna kinda wipe the needle off. You just don't want any corrosion or anything on the tip of this. If you happen to have done all of this before and you're still getting fuel leaking, sometimes a ridge will wear into the tip of this and it won't seal up anymore in the rubber tip, so you gotta buy a new needle. So, but we're just gonna wipe everything off. And we're going to put it together. So for the rubber plug, you just kind of twist and push a little bit. You can get a push back in there. And then the pilot is going to go in this hole right here. And this just gets screwed all the way in until it's tight. Make sure you wipe your screwdriver tips off before you go screwing in a jet. You don't want to have a dirty screwdriver tip and knock stuff down in the hole as you're putting it back together. All right. The most fire tubes going in first in this hole. Tighten it down with a crescent. I don't know, maybe a seven millimeter. But you don't want to over tighten it, it's just brass and aluminum. Alright. We're gonna stick the main jet in it. And the end of the emulsion most fire tube. We're going to tighten that. And then there's this little tiny jet that goes in the side right here. So. All right, those are in it. We're gonna take the float and wipe it off too. Let 
We're going to take our clean needle. I'm going to slide it in there. All right, now, I don't know how well this is going to come through on the camera. But if you look at this pin, it's knurled here on this side. It's got lines on it that go in maybe an eighth inch. Don't start that side. That side's knurling makes that diameter bigger. So you want to start it from the opposite side. And what that knurling does is hold the pin so it doesn't come out. So we're going to get it in there, push it up to the knurls. And then we're just going to kind of tap it with something hard to get it to... Go in there. And the knurls are what made it hard to get out the first time. Not all float pins have knurls on them. But, alright, so oh, we got the fuel screw. We might as well put that back in right now. Which was. Oh, duh, right there. Mm -hmm. Alright, it's so right there. And we wrote this down when we backed it out. So we didn't forget. So we're going to put this back in here. We're going to screw it all the way down till it gets tight. And then we're going to count the turns back out. We're going to back it out two and five eighths turns out. Because that's where it was running good before. So that's what we're going to do. Alright, so we're one half. One, one and a half, two, two and a half, and somewhere in there. All right. So fuel screw set, good enough to make it run, and we can fine tune it from there if we need to. All right. So we've got this collar. We're gonna wipe this off so it's clean. And set it on here and then we're going to start cleaning the foot bowl and the valve that's on that. Alright guys, I had the camera die. So in the meantime, I tore the bowl apart and took this apart. Um, this is pretty simple. This is kind of acts like a primer. There's a spring in here that sits in here. And then it just screws into the case. Now when I pulled this apart, all that nasty stuff came out in here. So that is really not good. I don't know if that's a common issue with these. But I got it scraped out of there as best I could with a pick and screwdriver. And blew it out as good as I could with air. And the inside of the bowl had some stuff in here that was like down in there. And like kind of deep. Usually, if a bowl's pretty open, you can get this down in here and kind of go around this and get a lot of the stuff cleaned up if you need to. But this has too many features in the bottom of the bowl. So I've got a lighter media in my sandblaster right now, so I just shot in here nice and light, but enough to get the stuff off. And then I blew through the passageways up and out and then kind of through here too to get everything cleared out. So... It's not going to hurt anything, but you want to make sure you get any sand out that you just put in there. But I couldn't get this to pump it first, so I assembled it while it was still kind of dirty. And I stuck it down, submerged it all the way in my parts washer, and started plunging it a bunch until I got a lot of the stuff worked out of it. So I'm pretty sure I got this clean enough, but yeah, it's pretty simple. This just goes in here. And then there's only one way to put this on, so we're going to put it back on. Um, I checked the diaphragm on this to make sure there was no cracks on it because the diaphragm is what seals this. There's no gasket in here. So, but it is good and it is good to go on the carburetor now. So now we're going to start back on the top, which should be pretty simple. Alright, so you want to make sure that this ridge on this diaphragm is clean. If it's not, just wipe it off gently with a rag and some carbon choke. But there is this one uh, loop on there that we need to line up with that feature right there in the carb. That'll line it up. So what we're going to do is a lot of times with a newer carb or something that's not 20 years old already, this gasket will stay in here by itself nicely. 
but sometimes if you've got one that's older and it's shriveled up and stuff what you can do is inside that this trough all the way around that where that ridge sits in you can put some grease in there or Vaseline and then when you go to put this in here that'll hold it from coming out and you can just work it in here and it'll stay the grease will help hold it but other than that we're gonna stick that in slide our spring down in and get our cap on and remember this cap has the this one bump right there that bump lines up with that right there so what we're gonna do is it has to go this way so if they match put it on there we're gonna do that and put our uh, vent hoses on and consider this cleaned alright guys here she is all the vent lines back on all right, pro tip, uh, take your vent lines and clean them. A customer's not gonna see the inside of the carburetor to know that it's clean, but if you can look at the machine and see all the vent lines are clean and the side of the carburetor's clean, he's gonna have more trust. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys like this type of content, um, if you got any pointers, put them down in the comments. But Please like and subscribe, uh, click the little notification bell, and uh, thanks, have a good one.